Hello, and welcome to Glitch Space. Oh boy, that is going to be an annoying title to say every time. Glitch Space. Glitch Space. I really struggle with putting those two words together in a seamless manner. They just seem to turn into Glitch Base every time I try. Oh well, this is a game by formerly Space Budgie. And it's a bit of an odd story. I saw this game back when it came out, I think two years ago, roughly, and I thought it looked really neat, albeit a little bit intimidating. I'll get into that in a second. So I sent out my regular old developer email asking about Let's Plays and asking about review copies, beg, beg, beg. But I never heard back from them, so I kind of just forgot about the game and played other stuff. And then, I think it was during this year's summer sale, I remembered, oh yeah, Glitch Space, I should check that out. Maybe it's gotten cheaper. And boy has it gotten cheaper. This game is now free, because Space Budgie has apparently disbanded. They are not making games anymore, and rather than just pull the game entirely and not have people play it anymore, it seems like they just made it free instead and just left it up. Which is a cool thing to do, like if no one's gonna be taking the money anyway, or however that would work if you're a developer studio and you disband and your game is still being sold, what happens to the money? But I guess they just decided to leave it up and now it's free and there is no way of contacting them, so... I'm just gonna play it. But as I said, I am slightly intimidated by this game. So it's a first person puzzle platformer. You know I love those if you know anything about my channel. But this one kind of relies heavily on programming mechanics. Where I don't know the full details. I think I watched the trailer way back in the day, but that's kind of it. But it's a game where the puzzle mechanics are you pretty much programming the world to fit your liking. Where, oh, there's a big wall in front of you. Well, you go into its properties and change its collision parameters to off or something. And then you can walk through because it doesn't have collision anymore. Stuff like that. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how much they expect people to know about programming. Because I don't really know much about programming. I would not say I'm particularly good at that kind of thinking. I took one course of programming way back in high school. And the most complicated thing I made was like just a visual interface of a calculator with buttons you could click. Made in Pascal. That's about it. Didn't really learn much. Nothing really stuck. So if it gets into complicated stuff, I am going to struggle, and I'm a bit wary of that fact that I might not even be able to complete this game, but maybe it's just kind of a normal puzzle game under the guise of programming language, where it's, it's just kind of the same as any other game. I don't know. That's what I'm here to find out, I suppose. So, let's try it out. And let's check out the settings menu first. It's pretty bare bones. There's resolution, full screen on or off, quality up to very high. And that's about it. You can change the FOV once you get into the game. Seems like it's pretty much a Unity game. I would imagine it's Unity. I'm not entirely sure. And I'm not entirely sure if when I hit cancel, it might cancel my recording. One second. No, okay, that's fine. Audio, you have music and sound effects. Nothing more. I assume there's no, like voiceover or anything like that or th that would be a slider here as well so at least there's sliders i never can understand games that don't have sliders but this one does so that's good and controls there's a, a sensitivity slider which is a bit odd so i was testing out the recording for the game and the default sensitivity i believe was 0 0.8 0 0.80 and that was way too fast for me so I lowered it down like all the way to 20 or something, 0 0.2, and it was far too slow. So I started raising it up, raising it up, raising it up, raising it up, and it just didn't get faster for some reason. It just was the same the entire way pretty much. 
and then suddenly I'm spinning around several laps a second. And I found out that there's a weird, almost like exponential curve to this sensitivity bar. And once you hit 0 0.5, it just goes out of control. 0 0.5 and it's super sluggish. 0 0.51 and it's like I can spin a, a lap and a half compared to a half revolution. It's extremely bizarre. So this is a bit too high sensitivity for me, but it's the lowest I can go without it being snail pace. So that's a bit weird. And then you have controls, which you actually can rebind, which is always nice to see. You can just click them and, you know, rebind like this. Always nice to see. So kind of good, just a bit weird. And that's about it. So let's check out the story and see what this game is all about. New game. I think that probably cuts out the recording. Yeah, this this game does that a lot, where every time I load into something, it'll cancel DX Story and start it up again, because DX Story is a lovely program that works flawlessly. So here we are, as I said, spinning around a little bit too fast for me, but it's fine. Uh, I guess I can show you. Oh, do I even want to, like, bother? If I go to controls... And this might fuck something up. Go just... Oh, can't even go down to 50. Because that's another weird thing. In-game, this goes by increments of 0 0.02. But in the main menu, it goes by increments of 0 0.01. So you can set it to 50 if you go back to the main menu and then move it. And stuff like that. It's weird. But now, 49. And now I'm going to spin an entire lap around. That's it. That's all I can do across my mouse mat when I go to controls. Set it one tick up. And now I'm spinning a revolution and a half. I don't even know. But let's just move. And yeah, as I said, there's also settings, graphics, a field of view slider now. I put it on 90. Looks fine. That's good, at least. I was hoping that would be a thing. And this is, like, something you can change, maybe, I suppose? Like, things that look weird, you can probably do something with, but obviously not yet. Oh, can I jump? Holy shit. I can jump, but not if you're traveling downward. Wait, no, I can. Uh, seems a bit weird. A little bit glitchy. I guess that's fitting for the name. What happens if you just jump off? Oh! You just teleport back up, like, instantly. And it's exactly in the spot that you were at? That's awfully kind of them. Yeah, exactly where you were when you jumped or, like, started moving towards your doom. That's kind of convenient. Um, so I can... Oh! Huh? I can't move. I'm locked. What is happening? Yes, hello? Oh. Huh? That was weird. That was re Okay, so that wasn't intended. I was thinking, like, what what's going on? But no, I was just stuck. For no reason. I couldn't move in any direction until I jumped. Yeah, I can't get that to happen again. Very odd. Oh god, this is bright. Holy crap. Um. Huh? Why can I not... Oh, wait. Oh, that's weird. So if you jump against a wall, you don't go up it because you kind of like get stuck on the wall. So you don't get your full height. So if you want to jump up something, you have to make sure to jump so you don't touch it. Like, before you're at your full height. That is weird. Haven't really seen that be a thing in a first-person puzzle platformer. Jump! I already know, but thanks. I don't know if there are, like, secrets or anything like that in this game where you have to explore around. I guess we'll find out eventually. And does this, like, kill me, or...? What? It doesn't... Huh? What is happening? 
it kind of pushes me, but not really. And now it pushes me, but if I, like, don't look at it... No? Now it just pushes me, but if I go around the other side... Oh, now it works properly again. Okay! This game definitely lives up to its name. It does seem a little bit glitchy, and I guess this is the level complete gate. Can I skip it? I can't crouch or anything. No. Alright, fair enough. Oh! It's not level complete. You just teleport to a different section, and I can go back? Oh! Wait, yeah, I'm in a different location now. Huh. And if I go back again... Okay, so now I'm, I just can't go back to the original location, but I do have two places to go from here. Oh. Wait, and it's just like slightly below here? Right? I'm just going to jump off, like, here, and see if I can see that. Ah, uh, no, not really, but if I go here... Oh, no, it's, like, the same location! It's just sending me to the same teleporter when I go through it. That's a very... nice effect. Like, I didn't realize that that was going on. That's some, like, anti-chamber stuff. I haven't even played anti-chamber, I just know it has... Stuff like that. I played the demo, I think, where you walk around a, a corridor and you keep turning left and turning left and turning left and turning left and you should be getting back to where you were, but you don't. That's kind of the same thing. That's neat. Didn't really mean to fall, but I guess we didn't have much choice. Yeah, I like that so far. Visually, the game looks really nice. What are you? A Stargate is initiating. Do I get my superpower now? My weapon of choice? I assume that's what's happening. The glitch cube! Aha! Right click. This is the Null Canvas. You can add and connect nodes to the canvas to create programs that affect the red cuboids in the world. Nodes are selected from a pop-out menu. Left-click to continue. Let me just process this for a second. Add and connect nodes. You select nodes from a pop-out menu. And then you create programs on those nodes, okay? Click the canvas. Move object down. Oh, so move object down is the the parameter that we have available right now. So I have to click on an object, which I could click over here. Um. Huh? Numbers. Ten. What? Huh? What am I doing? What is going on? Nodes can be connected in two ways. Clicking and dragging the output of a node. Oh, the canvas isn't like me clicking what I want to interact with. It's just like laying it out as a... Uh, what would you even call it? What is the word? Mind map or something where you just put a program and then you can link it up to do different things, I suppose. Okay, all right. Kind of, sort of understand it. Clicking and dragging the output of a node to the input of another, or by clicking and dragging the nodes together. Oh, see, okay. Yeah, he's doing it. Clicking the output or clicking the entire node and, like, hooking it into something. If the connection has been made correctly, a line will appear. Nodes can only be connect connected if their outputs and inputs match. I see, okay? Different types have different shapes. Numbers, for example, output a triangle. What do you mean numbers? Like, just 0 and 1, like, active or inactive, or...? 
What's that about? Connect the nodes. 10. Move object down. Can I delete this one? Or am I just stuck with this for now? Can I just make another one? 10. Yeah. And another one. 10. Why is it moving down? Why is this thing moving? Okay, um... I don't... Can I press delete? No? Backspace? No? I guess I'm stuck with these now. But... Oh, and I can't even use this one. Oh, now I can. Okay. Click X to quit. What does it mean, though? Like, ten numbers? I don't get that. How does this cuboid, the red thing over here, correspond to ten, ten numbers? Because I understand the move object down part, but not the rest, really. And I can't go back and find previous cuboids. Those are unavailable right now. And if I, like, right-click this again, I can undo this connection. No, I cannot. Maybe I'll learn to do that eventually? Because that seems weird if you can't. Move the main object down the inputted number. Oh, I see. So it's just move object down 10, like, blocks essentially, or 10 arbitrary number of measurements, unit of measurement, I guess, right? Because that kind of makes sense. 10. The number 10. Thank you, game. Yeah, I, I guess I understand that. That's a bit annoying. You can't- oh, you can X mark, but you can't see the X while that's, like, active. Alright, and now we go through another Stargate. Oh, well, I didn't even do it, but thanks. Oh, and yeah, that's gonna, like, cut out the recording every time I do it. I might want to try and record this with uh, OBS instead, if it's gonna cut out the recording every time I go into a different zone or whatever. Any red object may be manipulated, but I don't have to. I can just, like, jump up, and even here, I can just... Oh, wait, hold on. I assume I need the, the block here, but... Let's see. Wow, that is, I'm pressing the jump button, but it's like really, what is happening? It's super restrictive. Like if you're even going near an edge, you can't jump. I'm pressing it like here and it just doesn't let me. Guess I should just like jump from there. Doesn't really seem like there's much momentum with running or whatever. But that's, that's a very odd system that it's so hard to jump before you run off the edge. Oh well, let's see what this wants me to do. Move object up. Locked nodes can't be deleted. Okay, so this is a locked node. But I have two inputs, or maybe this is an input, this is an output. Or vice versa, I don't know. And that's like a reset button. Move it 20. And then hook that up, and it just flies up in the sky. Hold on, so if I... If I reset this, yeah, and then I stand on it, and then I raise it by 20. Wait, so I can click... Oh, I clicked the output. No? Didn't it say you could, like, drag the output? Why can I not do that? I kind of have to just do that. I don't understand the other method. But yeah, it just kind of teleports me up almost. Okay. I, oh, jeez. Yeah, what the hell is with the, like, the edges in this game? You kind of just slide off them if you're even near them. Nope. Not now. But for some reason I did up there. Reset it again. And then what if I do... Just zero. Obviously nothing. Doesn't change. 
But then if I do one, can I just steal this input? Yes, I can. And it moves up by one. And then 10. It's at the very top. All right, makes sense. And this one, move object forward. Okay, so maybe in the future we'll have access to using whichever one we want, but for now it's just using, it's just giving you access to what you need. And that's way too little, of course. But 20 is just fine. All right, cool. Yeah, this is simple enough so far. These are namespaces. They alter the available functions in your toolbox. I guess I have a toolbox. Aha. It's almost like... I was gonna say, almost like a... power-up thing. I see, but only for as long as I'm on them. So if I go here and I try to alter this, never mind. Cords connecting nodes together can be cut to break the program. I see, okay. Hover over the cord until a pair of scissors appears and then left click, all right? Also, scissors appear, but fair enough. Cut this, cut the link. True, logic true, object is solid, true. Okay, that makes sense, but I mean, I shouldn't do this, and I can't exit, alright, fair enough. Nodes can also be deleted entirely by right-clicking on them. I couldn't do that before, but now I can. Delete this. Fine. Logic has been added to your toolbox. Oh, I see, so because I now found that node, I can now use it in the future, just true or false. Or well, so far only true. So, object is solid, I can say 10. Object is 10 solid, but I can't even connect it because it doesn't have an output like that. But this one, I can say object is solid false. But if I say, oh, that's weird. So, if, if I say object is solid true and then remove it, it doesn't just make the object not solid. You have to actually say that it's object is solid false for it to actually happen. But yeah, no, I guess, I thought these would only work while you were standing on them, but it seems like it does just update it permanently. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, never mind. Is that something? No, nothing. So now it's just like, a bit glitchy. So if I go into this and say that it's, uh, do I want true? Yeah, I want true. Just object is solid. Now it won't flicker around. No, it's still flickering, but less, I guess. Still doing that static sound, that's weird. But yeah, fair enough. So delete these two and then do logic falls and hook it up. And now the object is not solid. It's kind of weird that you need to both remove the fact that it is solid as true, but then also add that it's solid false in order to have it actually happen. Ah, I see. So object is solid, false, we remove this, and then add a true flag. So far I'm following this, this isn't too bad. Then we have to step onto it and then move it forward by a number, say, 10. Okay, that's not enough. Let's make it 20. And if you remove the node, then it just goes back to the original position. Alright! This is cool! I like it, so far. I just hope it doesn't get insanely complicated to the point where I can't even understand it. Is this gonna be a new zone? Beware of Dala flow. Data flow, not the Dala. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it there for today. Beholding and bewaring of the Dala flow. I'm into it, so far. I might try a different recording method for next time, so 
this was a bit of a test episode. Next time is probably going to be a bit of a test episode, and we'll see how this all records and looks and plays and whatever. So far, no frame drops or anything like that, but who knows, that could always go down the drain. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this first episode of Glitch Space. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!